Hey everyone, you might be wondering, why is there a naked guy here? Funny you ask, because you didn't wonder, why does he have no arms? Thanks, Leaf. So, let's talk about sculpture today. I want to use this figure as kind of an example to think about how might an artist create a sculpture like this. Now this happens to be a plaster cast, but think about it. We had some famous statues created by artists like Michelangelo, his famous David statue that is larger than life, carved out of a solid block of marble. So how would you do that? Well, that method is called subtractive. What that means is you start with a mass of material. In this case, it would have been a giant block of marble, and you subtract away material, revealing the sculpture within. That will take some amazing artistry, and a material like marble is unforgiving. You break an arm off, you're not really gonna be able to reattach that. You carve too much, you can't put it back in. Now, if this were a carving, you'd probably leave spaces here filled in until last, but this would be quite a challenge to carve. So let's look at the opposite method, additive. Now, additive sounds like what it is. You are going to add stuff and more stuff and more stuff to build the sculpture that you're talking about doing. Now, this figure actually is really helpful to look at because you can see the individual muscles on the figure. That's often how artists would sculpt figures like this. They would lay in clay to build up the bones and then the muscles and then the skin and then the flesh and then last draping whatever clothes or cloth or leaf they might have. So. Fundamentally though, let's think about how we can work with clay. Can we carve clay? Yes. Can we add clay? Yes. And there's one more thing that makes clay special that maybe a block of plaster or marble doesn't have. Clay is malleable or moldable. So there's actually three methods we're gonna be focusing on to create our sculpture. We're going to use additive, subtractive, and modeling, just moving and manipulating the clay. What are we doing? We're gonna start with the shoe. Now, a shoe is important because we all have them, hopefully, and you wear them every day, hopefully. And the idea is we want to use something widely recognizable as a sculpture study. We're going to use the shoe as a basis to learn the sculpture techniques, but later on, we're going to have more personal choice and do a, a more detailed sculpture project. So this will take us around a week, and our goal is to capture with as much lifelike realism as possible the shoe. Now, we're going to begin by measuring and analyzing the different points of view with the shoe. So we're going to use a ruler to measure it because we're going to be doing this in half scale. That means half size, a one to two ratio. So this shoe happens to be about 12 inches long. So the one we're going to make is about six inches long. It'll make it a little bit easier to complete in the time that we have. Now, another thing you might be thinking of with clay, if I build this solid, a solid chunk of clay shaped like a shoe, isn't it gonna blow up in the kiln? And the answer is yes, it will. So, one of the other strategies we're gonna learn about is hollowing. We're gonna learn how to cut this open, scoop out the insides, and put it back together. And that way we can learn how to make almost any shape in clay successfully. Finally, another concept I wanted to cover is this idea of freestanding sculpture. Notice this guy is on this platform. Without the platform, it would just fall over. His feet are attached. So that's part of the sculpture in this case. And I can just set it here on the table and it's not gonna fall over. It's freestanding, it's self-supporting. Sculpture also has another concept that relates called in the round. And what that means is all sides of the sculpture are equally important. While a person may have what we would consider to be the front, you know, because uh, that's where our faces are, all sides are equally important artistically. Same with the shoe. Even though there might be a top or like a main view we would look at, we really have to sculpt all sides with equal attention. So we're gonna think about that freestanding in the round concept. Another consideration we're going to factor in is the use of observation versus memory. Now, a lot of people think, oh, you're really good at sculpting that and you have this great imagination. Someone that has a lot of experience that can just whip together something. The thing is though, to get there, you need years of practice. And the way you practice is through direct observation. So the fundamental principle with this is we are going to have a real life shoe in front of us that we can observe every little detail. But we're also gonna use some techniques with photography and a little bit of digital image manipulation to make it easier. Fundamentally though, I do not want you working from memory because our brains fill in a lot of details for us that aren't always correct. 
So you are going to be basing your sculpture on direct observation the entire time. That means the entire time you're sculpting this, either the shoe is out or your images are out or both. They must be out at all times because otherwise you're working from memory. So we wanna use our eyes to study details really well because you're not gonna sculpt them if you don't notice them. So, so follow the lesson guides throughout this next week or so and try to create your shoe as successfully as possible, but really think about the skills and techniques that you could apply to a future sculpture project where you have a lot more choices involved. Think about how clay can work as a sculpting medium and how the various skills and techniques we use can help you along the way. The end.